So welcome back. Thanks. It's nice of you to join me. It's nice to join. So we got Miss Rushing, Mrs. Back. Rushing in the house. Back in the house. Back in the house. Like she never left. But she did. But she did. Which is why she missed the amazing f- first interview of season two of Rush Prize. But that's okay. Because it was for a good cause. I'm hurt. I'm hurt by the fact that I had for, to miss it. And I was really looking forward to It's for a great cause. Yeah, James, James. James said you you uh-huh. got one more. Oh. <laughs> Technically, we're even. He said you got one more. We're even because I invited him to your birthday dinner. And I guess he didn't see the message. I, I can't remember if I DM'd him or I Facebook messaged him, but it didn't show up because we're not friends. So by the time he found it, like. Oh, it was in like was, message requests. I think so. It was like. Why aren't you friends with James? I don't know. You should be friends with we've James. We've never met. You've never met several people from my. I'm just my, saying we've never met. That doesn't mean anything. There hasn't really been. I feel like there hasn't been. You haven't triggered a Facebook status that's caused a true like engagement between. I gave him a whole like a whole dedication for being my accountability partner for finishing my master's. You did. I might have been a little like jealous. Why? Because I felt like I should have been your accountability partner. I mean, you were. Yeah. But but you also threw me the party and I gave you a a shout for that, too. Yeah. But I mean, that's a defaulted shout. But you also didn't want me to get my master's. No, I didn't want you to get your master's when you were getting your master's. Yeah, so that means you didn't I want me to get my bachelor's degree. It means you didn't and want me to get my master's. Have my degree, my degree shine. Like I just, I just wanted my moment. And it was, oh yeah, I'm getting my master's. Anyway, this is not. Um, but yeah, you should be friends with James. You should uh, request uh, him. He should request me. Okay, James. <laughs> James, you need I will, to request. I will add. I will request add. Chess. You on Facebook, but I'm glad the interview went well. I He's am. not really even on there, so he. he no. Oh. Is he on Instagram? Maybe that's why he didn't see my message when I sent it. Uh, I, well, I think he does it in in waves, in seasons, in okay. seasons. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll forge a relationship, um, and we'll have to have you on another time. Um, but I'm eager to hear slash see the conversation that took place. Again, I hate that I couldn't be part of it, but it was Canel's birthday, and shout out to Canel. Shout out to Canel. Um, she's just one of the few people that she's always there for us. So I, I had to be there for her. So it was a good time. It was a good night. It's good to get out. I got dolled up, wore heels for at least three hours. And then we got to the last stop and I changed, even though I was begged not to. They were like, we're almost at the table. Just wait, just wait. I was like, I don't know how long this wait is going to be. And this extra baby weight means I, when my feet say they're done, they're done. So those heels that are still in front of the front door. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's more so that rem- I tripped over oh. the other morning. Yeah. It's a reminder that I didn't. I'm very proud. This is like the first time I've worn heels this year. Like heels, heels. Congratulations. So I'm very proud. You but yeah, be. it was a good. It was a good Friday night. Got to enjoy the city. Some beautiful rooftops um, that we hopped around and just. That's because we have a beautiful we skyline. Have a gorgeous skyline that I've always yeah, appreciated. Sleeping on, don't be sleeping on Charlotte. I've don't sleep on the QC the skyline. David has always been a hater, but anyway, um, that's not true. You used to be such a hater. That's not true. Charlotte had to grow on me, but I Which was hating the sense skyline. You're from Monroe, like the I'm audacity. Not, I'm not from Monroe. Okay, where did you graduate high school from? I graduated high school in Union County, from a school in Union County, but I'm not. I, it's been like two and a half years there. It doesn't matter. Or a year and a half. Two and a half. It doesn't matter. The audacity half, that... Half of the sophomore. The audacity that Charlotte Skyline had to grow on you when your city does But that's not all I... When the city you lived in didn't even have a skyline. But that's not all I knew. I like, know, D, but Like, D.C. was the biggest city where I'm from. Okay. And that... But I don't ever hear you talk about D.C. skyline. You, like, never once ever said anything. This is like the first time you've ever mentioned it. I mean. You really don't even reference D.C. <laughs> I don't because it's not like I was, I was in the streets of D.C. But uh, I mean, I I spent some money. My dad worked in D.C. for 30 some years. Um, well, not 30 years from the time I was born till we moved. So about 15 years working in D.C. So I think I went to work with him one time and obviously field trips and. When you go in places, you pass D.C. So, no, I didn't really actually spend, ever spend time in D.C. until I got into 
um, the political journalism program I got at Georgetown after college. Yeah. In, in Georgetown. Um, and I got to intern at the Afro American, um, newspaper. I should have parted on the other uh, side. so I, I was living in Georgetown and then commuting to, to where the Afro, uh, office was, which is on the other end of DC, which was in the, you know, not so nice part of part of DC. So I literally was in the fancy part of DC, and, and isn't that where you were living with the rats? Uh, no, I was living with the rats in Georgetown. Yeah, so they they put us in the dorm, um, I guess, where they normally keep the freshman boys who always just colleges, like just because we're we're men and we're probably like forty percent of us are probably got dirty hygiene habits anyway. Doesn't mean you always have to just like neglect the dorms and the quarters that you put us in. Like do. Do better Maybe for your incoming for, for your incoming men. Um, but yeah, we had we had mouse problems. It's funny because every year around summertime, my Facebook memories remind me uh, that we had to we were catching multiple mice on a daily basis. In Georgetown for uh, I don't know how long that program was? Was it eight weeks? Mm-hmm. Seven weeks? It was something like that. It was pretty much the summer. Um. Yeah, but that was my first. That was my first real DC experience. Um, I got to hang out with my cousin uh, Larry, who took me to uh, one of his spots to eat um, called Dukem's. It's a very, very famous spot up there. The fish was just amazing. I felt like there was a river right, like, right underneath the restaurant, and somebody just. I mean, DC's on the water. No, but I, I mean, so maybe there is a river that runs. Right out of the restaurant. I don't know. But, you know, I'm not really a fish guy. No. And bone in. Fried fish? Yeah. It was, it was, I it guess, was amazing. I guess I better go to Dukem's. Gotta go back to Dukem's. So, not to turn this into memory. Um, That's what Memory lane with uh, my, my journalism program. But uh, that was fun. It was a fun time. Met a couple of, a uh, few friends who I'm still in contact with today. One being uh, Krishana. Shout out to Krishana if you're, uh, if you're watching, uh, who's expecting their, she and her husband Q expecting their second child. Mm-hmm. So. Stop there. Huh? Stop there. Oh, is that too much? No. Oh. I'm saying she should stop there. Oh, stop. Oh, yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop it too. Please. Um. Thanks for that old fashioned. It's amazing. You don't even respect old fashions. I'm really just a straight guy. Um, <laughs> I'm really a straight. When it comes to my drinks, I'm really a straight guy. Um, neat, straight, single, double, whatever. I'm not a big cocktail guy. But uh, my wife makes mean cocktails. So every once in a while, I'll let her put her little razzle dazzle on my on my drink as i did tonight which is why my eyes are hanging low okay so uh this is our juneteenth episode it's juneteenth and i am unapologetically dope the back half i should be black in there too the uh the back half of our juneteenth episode obviously we we uh i interviewed james um before uh this this segment but um we wanted to still do what we normally do before uh, we put the episode out. So here we are. Here we are. Here we sit. Representing the black on our Juneteenth episode. Black. Yeah, I got. I decided to do something different. So I got like a little little kid with his playing his video games with the it's black a cute shirt. The black fist. Yeah. And David got me this shirt again. Unapolog- unapologetically dope and black. Because you are. I know. Um, it's a good place to be in that unapologetic stage. But uh, yeah, so it's Juneteenth. A lot has happened. Also Father's Day. That too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and Jess made a mean, mean breakfast and, and dinner. I haven't ate this well in a while. She's so busy now because she want to be Miss Miss Boss Chick. Look. We ain't got it. We don't get them home cooked meals like we used to. No. So special occasion. So we had. It took me, it took me back to 
French to a, toast to a simpler, and fried a, chicken. A simpler time. And then we had, and I don't even know what I was doing with dinner. It was like the most, I don't know why I was trying to do so much. But we had New York strip served with two sauces, rice pilaf, shrimp. Like a, it was a scallop in a Riesling sauce that I made, a garlic Riesling sauce that I put on half of your strip steak and then just the mushrooms cooked in the demi glaze that I put on the other half. So yeah, and then did some air fryer asparagus, which if you are not air frying your asparagus, start, it's really good. Um, But yeah, that was it because I wanted Father's Day to feel special. I mean, aside from the fact that our kids were just out of control, I have no control over them. Um, yeah, it was a great, it was a great Father's Day, very low key. Everybody was in good spirits for the most of the day, for pretty much all the entire day, except for the two year old who. You just don't know what just don't know. what spirit she's like. Gonna, she'll be fine, and then all you, you tell her no, or she doesn't get something she wants, and then the exact way she wants it, then she's just gonna have a meltdown. So it was really just listening falling. to her scream. Yeah. Um, for most of the day and then having to coerce her into calming herself down because whatever she was upset about wasn't that serious but anyway it is juneteenth it is father's day um it's a good time to be black it's a good time to be a father a father it's a good time to be a black father um i've gone out of my way to get a lot of education on juneteenth this year oh yeah yeah i just think i think i'm always wanting to learn i enjoy learning um i've thought about going back to school i just genuinely don't know what i want to learn so i haven't gone back to school because i'm not concerned about what you feel about my schooling because you just went back to school what do you mean because you're always like no every time i say i want to go back to school you're like no Mm. so you want to ask me again no because you're just Mm. gonna say yes for the sake of the fact that I just called you out. For no, this actually, no. I think uh, now timing is, is well, it's, I don't know. I'll put it this way. Uh, I feel like the timing is better now than it was previously hmm. for us. So I, I'd support it. How convenient. It's not convenient. It's just, it's just the way it is. Well, yeah, I enjoy learning. I enjoy learning things about. Be a lifelong learner. I, <laughs> sorry, it's an it's inside I might, joke. I might be a lifelong learner. It's, a, it's an inside um, joke. I'm sorry. But I do enjoy learning. I do absor- I enjoy absor- <laughs> absorbing, <laughs> absorbing knowledge. And I've just been craving more intellect, if that makes sense. Um, so considering it, but until I know what I want to do um, or what I want to learn, because I don't really learn to do like learn for work purposes. I learn for me purposes. So anyway, uh, I've gone out of my way to learn as much as I can about Juneteenth. And I realized my perspective on it has evolved. Um, I don't want to use the word anger per se, but just, you know, when you're, when you're black or when you're an ally or an accomplice, whatever title you choose to walk in, you, there's like a level of, oh my God, that's terrible. Or like the human race is horrible, all of that stuff. But I think when you really stop to like think about like just the atrocities, it, it's an anger that you can't act on, which is frustrating. And it's a disappointment of the fact that people still don't get it. That just can almost drive you insane. And that's kind of where I am in turn. So I've had to not really, I don't want to say acknowledge Juneteenth, but I've had to not go out of my way to like get on social media and do all of that stuff because it's so upsetting the state that we are in. When you say the state, what do you just, mean? Just so, you know, I'm upset on two fronts because you know, I decided to stir the pot and I asked if, you know, a company, the company I work for observes Juneteenth. And 
the answer I got was very political. Um, or no, it's political the term. Sort of diplomatic. And it was just kind of I, insulting might be harsh or maybe just disappointing because all of the phases we've gone through in terms of, you know, the black box on Instagram and we stand like all of the things that we, you know, we speak about lightly. We hear you. Yes. We see you. We support you and all of this stuff. We're listening. You know, Black History Month comes and, you know, people go out of their way to whatever company product service they offer you know they'll find a black person and call them out and you know do extra use this code blackity black for 10 percent <laughs> off <laughs> so it's like i've seen it i've watched it and then you know you have a moment where you're like oh that's great but then it's like when you think about it you realize it's just it's just performative so i think for me if a company makes the effort to make juneteenth a holiday that all of their employees, majority of them will probably be white, get to celebrate. I think it speaks volumes in terms of inclusivity. Actually, and I mean, I'm sure there are some companies who just did it to save face, but actually acknowledging the significance because Juneteenth, for the most part, is the Black Independence. It's Black Independence Day. White Independence Day is what I, I consider July 4th. Everybody gets July 4th off. That is that is a holiday, you know, unless you, you're in retail or, you know, just industries that can't afford to close. That's the holiday. we that It's that independence that we've been <clears throat> groomed, raised to acknowledge, to, to take advantage of, to take the day off, barbecue, go away, whatever. But I think there's a place of privilege that corporations white people who don't make the effort to see things from a different perspective sit at and i've toiled with how to have this conversation because me naturally i don't like offending people i can be direct i can give my opinion but i always try to say things so that i'm not because i don't want someone to like i was like I think I was listening to the last episode. I was like, I'm not racist, but, <laughs> and then of course I followed it with a, but, and I think there's, there's a default. Anybody in a who lot, says they're not racist is racist. I think there's a default in a lot of, of black people, minorities where we want to make everyone feel comfortable. So we don't want to say things that are, and I mean, you get on me about making blanket statements, but we don't want to say things that will offend someone to make someone else uncomfortable. But the fact of the matter is the, the person who's going to be uncomfortable is the person who, when it comes to race relations, is going out of their way to make it seem like they understand or like they care, but they really don't. And I'm so I I've, I've decided within this past week that I'm no longer going to try and sugarcoat or make other people comfortable with my statements. If my statements offend you, if I say something in a blanketed way and you're offended, well then you need to see why you're offended. You need to look at it from my perspective and then you also need to see what about my perspective offends you. So this applies to people not married to you, right? This only applies to people not married to you, correct? I take your silence as a yes. <laughs> take it however you want. So, in my reflection about, like, oh, this company has the audacity to not have Juneteenth off, and there are all these other companies who don't, but July 4th is a recognized independence day i get it when it became a holiday like people weren't really thinking about black people like that um but in this day and age with all that we've been through in the past two and a half years to not is insulting it's a it, and it's almost it's offensive it it, it, it kind of hurts my feelings because it's just like even through with juneteenth and and black independence it wasn't the same. And so I was listening to this podcast, which is amazing. It's, it's you know, I last week I said Ratchet and Respectable was my favorite podcast. This one, um, it's called Black History for White People. It's, it's phenomenal when it comes to giving knowledge of just like, and 
And it's crazy how I'm black and I'm still going out of my way to absorb more black knowledge in terms of black history and why we're here. I think that's crazy. Huh? It's not? Okay. No. So it's not crazy. Um, no. But no. I feel like there are so many people who would benefit from this. And yes, Juneteenth is black independence, but what came after Juneteenth, you know, they were ta- in their segment, they were talking about how the original Juneteenth, the people who were freed couldn't even celebrate because of the fear of punishment. So mm-hmm. even in freedom, there's bondage. And that's something that America has carried on for so many generations that even in freedom for black Americans, for blacks who reside in America, there's bondage. You know, And just thinking about how the statement they said, I can't remember the full context of the conversation, but they're saying, you know, America got its independence over, I think it was a 3% tax. And that's why the tea in the harbor, all of the revolu- revolution and all of that stuff that got us to where America is today. 3%. But that only benefited half, if not less than half of the population. So the, there's such a contradiction in July 4th in terms of the fact that it's Independence Day because a war was fought for the independence of this nation when there were people who were not seen as equal, who were not given their independence, who were still required to work and labor for this country. And I also get upset in terms of, so it's like 4th of July is great. Juneteenth is still, there's still so much America. Like I was always kind of on the fence with reparations. Then the pandemic happened and they were dropping like trillions and billions and all of this stuff. And I was like, so y'all got it. Um, I've changed my stance on reparations. I definitely think that something needs to be done and not like these small little like neighborhood equity. We're going to, you know, pour into the neighborhood and we're going to put more. So I just want to be clear. The opinions. Of- no, 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 no. <laughs> no, actually, I forgot. I forgot all about that disclaimer. Because um, I'm the controversial. But one. now that you mentioned it, yes, the opinions um, expressed by Jessica belong to her and her alone. They are not indicative of the greater views of us Real here punk. at Rush Vibes. You're not trying to go hotel with me? Um <laughs> No, I was gonna say. Actually, I was. I was gonna be funny. I was gonna. You realize if they do reparations, then if they just do American descendants of slaves, you wouldn't. That's you would, why I married a black American. <laughs> so, you, what makes Y'all, you think? What makes you think you qu- you entitled? Why, see, wait, it's wait, the wait, long wait, game. Wait. It's the long game. What makes you think you entitled to a cut of my check, though? Because I gave you African kids. My my reparation check will have absolutely nothing to do with my Look. my children. That's for me. Look, my dad's on my birth certificate, so we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. As as uh, as a first generation American, you'd be on the outside looking in. I would be, but I'd be good because when you buy whatever nice thing you buy for yourself, <laughs> buy I'm nothing. still gonna reap from it. I'm not gonna buy nothing. Okay, but I just think I think America did everything wrong, and I know a lot of people think this. But that's why we're in the situations that we're in today. America, two years before, it taking it, it taking two years for freedom for blacks to get to Texas is wild. And also the history that I've learned on Texas, because I did some digging. Now, Missy, I love y'all. Craig, I know you love Texas, so you, I don't know, this, this love can't spread to you, but... I can't rock with Texas. Like I couldn't live in Texas. Just understanding the the history and the fact that you know his, uh, Texas used to be part of Mexico, and the reason why Texas separated from Mexico and became its own independent state was because it wanted to have slaves. It wanted to recruit slavers to Texas, and Mexico. Team Mexico right here. Mexico. Let me show y'all your respect. They were like, nah, we're not we're not here for that. So the whole concept that Texas has, you know, you know, everything's bigger in Texas, we're our own state. Like they became their own independent nation for the most part, simply to have slaves. So that people could be and and if you like you, you seem, needed Congress's you, approval. You seem surprised by this. I am because I there's still like a little flicker of hope in me that like 
people are better than this um but they're not not people but like since history was better than this but it's not i mean just learning that you needed to get Congress's approval to even free your slaves if you happen to want to free your slaves, and they would immediately have to leave Texas. Like, there was a time where in the Constitution of Texas, whatever those state paperwork is, that they clearly said, if you were not white, you could not, like, if you were enslaved, if you were black, you could not live in Texas free. Like, that's it. Like, you had to leave. Like, te- Texas was on some other stuff. Again, you seem surprised by this. I know. I know. But it's like, sometimes you just get some information. It's like, hearing it, seeing it, reading it in a certain mind state lets you absorb it differently. And that's really just how I felt. And so, just thinking of, of how history went, and it's like, yeah, the Emancipation Proclamation, but, it like, slavery was not the reason why the slaves are free like there there were white supremacists in the north yes there were people abolitionists there were and i applaud those people there are people who acknowledge that slavery was wrong but they still didn't see the black man as an equal human being created by god they they were still like i said white supremacists there it's the the civil war was not a fight to free black people the Civil War was a fight to keep the Union together. And I think history doesn't do enough in making sure people understand that. And that's why, if we roll back into how we talked about the Confederate flag last week, that's why it's so offensive, because people will say the Confederacy were fighting for states' rights. But they were fighting for the states' rights to have slaves. And people... It's not true. No, it is true. <laughs> because what other, right, what other right were the states not getting? It was simply for the right to ins- to keep people enslaved. We don't have a hate problem in this country. I'm not talking about a hate problem. We don't have a race problem. problem. We don't have a race problem. <laughs> a slave problem in this country, Jessica. Okay. The the reason why the Emancipation Proclamation worked. It's a heart problem. It was all like all of all of this. I'm not listening to you anymore. All of this is simply due to the fact that, as always, the black body was valued for what it could contribute. When the Civil War first started, when slaves came up as refugees, they would send them back. And then someone got the bright idea that we could just use them as soldiers. So it wasn't a matter of you're a human, your life matters. We want to help free you and your your family and your fellow black man. No, it was, oh, we can utilize you. So even in this so-called freedom, it was it it was just a bargaining chip. It was for the advantage of the white man who wanted to win. So it's it's just I think until people really like there's there's such ugliness in America's history and no one really wants to well like when you just kind of want to look past it and move forward, but we can't move forward until we acknowledge this this stain that's on the wall and and that is that america never really did what it was supposed to do by black people so america still owes black people because if america really wanted to they would have as soon as the civil war was won they would have made it illegal to have this confederate flag they would have created programs and gone out of their way to protect black people they would have actually enforced 40 acres and a mule and all of these promises so it's like almost hard for me to even want to celebrate juneteenth because the actual the idea of what juneteenth is and what it actually is are almost contradictory to each other and it almost it's 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 hurtful in my opinion and granted i'm a first generation black american but i still you know have to overcome the same black hurdles because no one looks at me and says oh no you're a first generation your people are from somewhere else no black is black is black where no matter where you come from so for me, I just I think I've just looked at Juneteenth very differently this year. Not in the sense that I don't want to celebrate it, but in the sense that it's just not it, it 
I think the veil of what we should be as black people in America and what we are has been exposed to me differently. I don't know. Um, and I don't know. It, it just really upset me. And I think just knowing that there are still companies out there who don't feel the need to make it an actual holiday is also kind of hurtful because I you celebrate your Independence Day because your Independence Day actually gave you independence. It actually gave you freedom. You got something tangible. Black independence put made them become sharecroppers. They may or may not have gotten paid. They, you know, had, you know, vagrancy laws where they had to work six days a week. They were still enslaved. There were, you know, a, a white woman accuses a black man of looking at her wrong or someone says, makes up a rumor, people get shot, die. Like there's so, there's so much blood and anguish and, and hatefulness. And the six, every time the black society succeeded, it was taken out from under them. So I think I'm just frustrated. And I'm frustrated that there are still people who are in a place of privilege where they don't have to make the effort to understand my frustration. And that's just annoying. And it's like, and it's more annoying because my kids have to grow up and deal with the kids or the grandkids of these people. So that it's just going to continue. So I think that's, that's you, just, what do you mean? These people, these people, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I, I told you I'm done sugarcoating because it's, it's a black thing to feel like you need to, we, we go out of our way to include people and to make other people comfortable. And we don't necessarily get that same feeling, you know, you know, Juneteenth came, people probably went to festivals. They probably, you know, asked a friend if they could borrow a daishiki, you know, stayed out. It was hot. I didn't go to a festival, but I just, it was very hot. it's hot. I can't, it was I just, very hot. I'm not built like that. And my people, and my people come from Ghana. Like oh, yesterday, Africa. yesterday, well, today's yesterday Sunday. Today wasn't that Today bad. actually wasn't that, just today is actually Juneteenth. So it actually wasn't. But the festivals were yesterday. Yeah, um, a lot of festivals were Saturday and yesterday folk. The weather was yeah we were playing good. around and the kids and i were playing around in the garage um so i personally didn't go but i'm also in this like existential i don't really know how i feel about it um and i get it like you know still celebrate so you're if i can try and narrow down everything i've said no no, no. if i can um what i'm hearing is that um even though juneteenth is not recognized on a uh national scale mm -hmm. as a holiday um the now that you've done some some digging into um the reality of what it was really what it was like around that time um and that it wasn't just the oh yeah now you're free mm -hmm. type situation um that it has you a little conflicted because you don't ever you don't think the country ever delivered on its promises by the creation of like the Emancipation Proclamation in Juneteenth because it's like uh, what, what do you call it um, a facade a facade uh, performative I guess yes. so you, you feel like it's not worth celebrating because not maybe not worth celebrating but you're conflicted in celebrating it as if it's like all good mm -hmm. when it when it really wasn't. Am I is that, is that I think, accurate? I think that's I, I didn't put it I, I didn't wasn't very eloquent with it. I gotta be honest, this <laughs> this uh, old fashioned is kinda hitting me. So it's okay. I don't have all my faculties. But um is that is that a fair I would say that's a fair assessment of what I'm the trying ballpark? to say. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know I think you think certain things you shouldn't have I don't know that you think you shouldn't have emotions over but you think aren't a big deal and then you realize like it does it does bother you and we as black people in my opinion are taught to kind of just deal with it 
you know, it could be worse, you know, this, but if I'm supposed to be an American and I'm supposed to be entitled to all of these liberties, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, but I don't, I'm allowed to feel that. So, and just spending so much of my adult life trying to be politically correct, trying to make people feel comfortable, you know, trying not to be offensive, but people don't do the same for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I'm just tired of it. Like it's, it's, I didn't choose to be black, but I'm blessed to be black. I like blessed. that. Yeah, I mean, that's the saying, but yeah. is it yeah. blessed to be black? Yeah. Sorry, you can't trademark it. Dang it. Well, you probably, I mean, I don't know if it's been trademarked or not, but it's not the first time I've heard it. I'm going to do the whole thing. I didn't choose to be black. Oh, well, that part, maybe, yeah. Because I've I've never heard it. That might be. You know, maybe I need to be I'm blessed to be black. I I, I would imagine, I mean, I've heard that before. No, I've never heard it. But I didn't choose to be here, but I'm blessed to be black. Might actually, that might actually. Maybe it needs to be like two generations. Black American to, to know this stuff. Um. I don't, it's just, it's a lot. And I, I think if people actually made the effort to understand black American history, not just American history, not just, you know, the beauty of we don't want to pay more taxes, we deserve to be free, but all like the actual people that the backs of this country is built on, I think it would give a different perspective. I think white supremacy reigns deep in every aspect of our life and our culture which is why so many people feel threatened which is why so many groups because you know we have white friends who i don't see in my opinion are not phased by like juneteenth becoming a holiday black books being on library shelves like the and and that's because they don't like there's no need to be fearful but there are people who also, I think, deep down recognize the faults of forefathers and recognize if they if amends are made, they will be called out and they don't want that. So there's 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 a lot. Um, I, I, I will now stand on the state. America owes black people big time as a nation because. And I sometimes can't even put it to words. Like if you hearing stories, I took a class, um, the new South, um, back in college. And that was one of the hardest classes I ever took. I had to, I was working full time. So a lot of the books were long and I'd, you know, sending emails, scheduling work, people to work. So I would do audio books. And there was one book, um, the warmth of many sons, which I highly recommend to anyone who appreciates black history. That was probably one of the hardest books I've ever, I listened to it. There would be moments I'd be sending emails and I'd have to pause and stop myself from crying. Just listening to the stories, the abuse, the fact that, you know, during the great migration, people had to sneak out because if a white sharecropper that someone was working for got wind of the fact that they were going to escape or not even escape, move for a better life they would be killed lynched whatever arrested for the simple idea of of bettering themselves because even generations later they were still seen as a white man's property like it's heartbreaking what america has done to black people so to simply not see the need to acknowledge a holiday that's supposed to celebrate a faux freedom. To me, it, it's it it doesn't make sense. On top of the fact that the holiday is again just semantics, just you know, here's a performance. We'll write this holiday in for you, but we won't actually do anything on the legislative level to to make changes to improve and better the lives of the lives of Black people. That's that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But it's it's just it's tiring. And people who don't have to deal with it don't have to deal with it. So they don't have to see like how hurtful that can be. 
how over how frequently overlooked black people can be how many times in my life can i count being the only black person in a situation walking into a room and trying to see who else is there who looks like me oh not no one it's it's just me working a job and recognizing that I can only do or say so much because I'm the black representative. And if I'm too loud, this is how other black people will be perceived. If I'm too opinionated, this is how other black people, knowing that like it's a burden that I as a professional carry, that I need to be successful in a certain way because I need to make sure that there's a space for another black person to fit in. That's That's... I don't that's not a burden that my white counterparts I I could ever imagine them dealing with. They don't do the job, okay? They get fired. I don't do the job well and get fired. There's always going to be a pause before considering hiring someone else who's like me cuz what if that person's like Jessica? Or what if Jessica does everything and pushes herself further than she's supposed to because she's trying to prove herself as worthy as a black person? And the next person doesn't live up to that standard. So th- there's there's a impossible balancing act. And it's exhausting trying to live up to this expectation of, of wanting to belong, knowing you belong, but having to prove you belong. And then also in the back of your mind wondering what, like, people's true thoughts true feelings what political thing can i say what can i not say what are you really thinking who did you vote for why did you vote for them is there a secret room in your basement that's just confederate memorabilia and kkk swag like like these are things that you think about so that's just my juneteenth sense cool but happy juneteenth everybody <clears throat> you know you kind of did that thing um <laughs> people talk about on twitter when uh all the streaming services say that they're celebrating black voices all they show is like all the tragic called the the black trauma movies <laughs> oh did i do trauma porn just now sorry because I, I hate mean, trauma porn i mean it's hard not to when you talk about the history of of black people in this country um it's it's really hard not to um, even all of the things that are sort of held up mm-hmm. today um, came out of black trauma and, and black struggle. Um, they were the sort of the silver lining of a lot of what those time periods were like. Um, you know, I, I don't really need to uh, don't really need to add any of my own flavor on what you just said. I think it's um, I think it stands on its own. I think it's very, uh, it's very open and honest and vulnerable and, and, uh, just honest, you know, um, stretch of, of words that you gave. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to try to try to add to it. I think, I think it's just, I agree with absolutely everything you said. Um, the corporate, the corporate part is, is unfortunate. Um, there was a part of me while you were talking that was like, well, you know, <laughs> you could do devil's advocate and say, it was a really only been a federal holiday for like, this is like the second year it's been yeah, a federally man. recognized holiday. But, um, obviously my company has, uh, given it off, um, given employees off <clears throat> and, um, didn't they give like an optional work day? They did say that due to uh to see summer holiday summer holiday but to be fair they gave the same option for july 4th so Mm. uh yeah they did so it was uh it was interesting they're just coming for everybody's independence you say if you want to work and get overtime you can work on this holiday but you can also observe it and, and not work um so my my company is at least from the most senior levels of leadership, they, they seem to be 
serious about diversity and inclusion. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't with them at the time, but in 2020, uh, during the height of the uh, a lot of the um, black activism, black activism, but just a lot of the fallout from George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all those atrocities that that happened uh, that that summer of that year. Uh, I, I heard that the CEO encouraged people to go out and protest and said, hey, that's um, a good use of your time is what I've heard. He's been quoted as saying. And, um, you know, that's it's nice to hear. You know? It must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know how I could tell the story. You could, but you don't have to. But I don't have to, to. Of how it was like with the company I was actually at. Um, Dave was out here. I thought I was Hotep. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I told the story last season. I think there's yeah. like a sixty percent chance I told, I told the story last season. But um, might have because he was in these streets. But yeah, I, I I went out and and did some, you know, some some protesting uh, in the height of height of COVID. But I talked with with Jess and made sure that it was something she was comfortable with me doing. And uh, she thought that the moment uh, that we were living in history uh, justified the the risk. And um, so it was something I felt like I needed to do. Honestly, I wasn't really concerned about COVID. It was, if anything, it would have been safety. No. Like, oh, sorry. But I think for me, saying I wanted, one, I couldn't go because I think Savi was still, was brand new. Um, but we did watch your stream. Obviously, we didn't live in the original civil rights movement. But I would like to think in 30 years, if we have grandchildren and they're studying history and they say, 64. I'm going to assume you're going to be called Popa too. They can call me grandpa. Okay. I don't really like Popa. I don't know where that came from. Solace curated it. Yeah, um, and they say, Grandpa, what were you doing in 2020 when there was a worldwide pandemic and people protesting? I want to be able, I, I want you to be able to say, put on a backpack. I got my camera and I was out in the streets because I saw it as wrong as well. I would have been right there with you, but again, global pandemic and two babies. Well, I, I did it for both of them. Yeah, but I mean, I I would like to think if we were born, what forty years earlier, that you know we would have taken the risk of being hit with fire hoses, dogs coming at us, because people did that for us to be where we are now. Right. So that protest that you participated in, that millions of people across the country, across the world participated in, who know, we don't know the advancement that's going to create for our children and their children. But when these girls grow up, I, I take pride in the fact that I can say, no, you, yeah, you could have stayed home and we could have, you know, watched other things and pretended like it wasn't going on. But you were like, no. I'm going to I'm going to go out there cuz this is an issue and I'm not going to be passive and just oh I'm just going to keep my head no you you recognize the issue. Yeah. I think that's something to take pride in. And, and and this is no insult to anyone who didn't. But we wouldn't be where we are today as a culture as a color if people didn't recognize the wrongs that were being done. And decide to take a stand for it. So that's that's my opinion, which is why I supported you in going out. And if they want to, you know, rekindle that, as long as the sun set and I got some mosquito repellent, because <laughs> the mosquitoes love me, um, I'm out in there too. I will, yeah. we will we will dish these three kids with somebody, and I will be I will be out there too. Um, yeah, it was um, it was cool. I, I think I, I participated in. I like three, four, mm -hmm. three, three to five um, demonstrations and, and protests and walks. Um, but there was, uh, I guess I'll tell the story. 
uh, during the. Do I know the story? A lot of the civil unrest that happened after George Floyd, um, Minneapolis, you know, when they mm-hmm. it was sort of lit on fire. Uh, our CEO, the company I was at, not the company I'm at now, the company oh, I was at before, story. yeah, put out a put out a statement, and um, it was uh, with respect to uh, the conversations and the understanding that he and I developed after. Spoiler alert, we actually spoke. Um, I will just say that the email was not very um, comforting to someone who looked like me uh, at the time. It it was not very uh, sympathetic to what uh, black people in this country were feeling and dealing with. Um, It just seemed like it was like lighting buildings on fire is wrong. (laughs) It's, It's basically the gist of the message that came well, through. Well, but so keep in mind, um, I'm like, what was it? Had I been there? Two months? Had it even been two months? I started in May. Oh, no, it hadn't. I may have been a month. Um, and this is happening, right? And I'm and I'm just like, it's just, read, it's just the email. It's just, I don't know if you've ever like read or, or seen something. And almost immediately after consuming it, you just felt like, yo, this is some exactly. And I just felt like kind of I can appreciate where you're saying, like, you don't want to, you know, mind your tongue anymore. You want to speak your mind and not dance around other people's Mm -hmm. feelings when it's your true thoughts and your true expression. Um, I'm I've I, too have been a victim of that because uh growing up you know you felt like you know the 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 black tax is a thing you had to be um even more presentable than someone who was white you had to mind your words even more so than someone was white you had to dress better than someone who was white because you're always automatically meeting that uh that stigma or that preconceived um notion um that someone has of you when they see that you're you're black and you're a male mm-hmm. um so i just kind of got tired of it and it was like yo like this email is just so tone deaf that i i literally am contemplating like leaving so i wrote him a whole email um i told my manager i was like yo i need a couple of days like i don't even know like i i can't work right now because i don't i don't want to work for this company at this, but this is who's at the head of it. Someone who would send something so obnoxious and like I said, tone deaf and my manager who's, who's cool. Uh, she was really cool. I never got to meet her or like, yeah, engage she's, with her, but she's goat. Um, she was like, yeah, I understand. And you know, I didn't really appreciate the, the email all that much either. And she gave me a couple of days. So I guess where I got around a couple of days later, I get a, I get a text it's the CEO it was like, David, I, I heard that, you know, you had a reaction to my email. I'd love a chance to sit down and speak. So I'm like, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. The CEO Text uh, of a company is texting me. Uh, I usually the text or email. I can't remember one of the two. Um, either way, he's reaching out to me directly. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I was in the process of drafting my response to his email. Cause he sent the email out to the company and um, I'd read it and had, had mulled over my response for a couple of days. I think I even let you read it mm-hmm. before I sent it. And so I was in the process of getting ready to send it to him. And I guess word it got out that I was new and I was in somewhat of a, I don't want to say high profile position, but I was, you know, I was, I was working for a quality department and quality was kind don't of. Don't get him wrong. He being humble. He was, he was important. <laughs> Importante. So, uh, I I guess, I guess word got around and it's not a big, he wasn't a huge company. So I guess it was easier, um, for, for, for word to get around. Literally the black guy got mad and everybody found out. (laughs) That's what, that's the, and see, this is the new, back to my initial point. The new black guy. Yeah. So he, he emailed me and was like, yo, let's, he was like, let's, let's have a conversation. And I was like, okay, but I would still like for you to read my email response. And he said, that's fine. So I sent it. Um, we, we met a couple of days later and, um, you know, I, again, 
um, I have respect for the conversation. Um, but basically he, the, an email that came out was not the first draft that he wrote. It's what happened to it after people who had to think about PR and blah, 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 got a hold of it and influenced it. And so it became something, um, a little more corporate than, uh, from the heart, which is kind of what you need at a moment like that. Uh, and he, and he kind of explained himself and obviously he had some, uh, some blind spots, uh, as it pertains to how a black person would receive his email or how black people were feeling. And I kind of had to give him that perspective and, uh, he was totally receptive and, and humble. And, um, uh, I appreciated the conversation, uh, was still disappointed that he didn't go with his gut and release the first email draft mm-hmm. that he, that he wrote. Uh, I wish he had had a little bit more courage, but you know, um, I, I still give to a man. I, I, I can respect someone who admits that, you know, they were, they were wrong, especially uh, when they're coming from a position of power. Right. So yeah, it was wild though. Yeah, I've never. I <laughs> I bucked. I bucked my uh, never my company. Seen David Buck, like buck my company CEO. Have him be upset, but yeah. he was so worked up about that, and even I was kind of like, "Is it that serious?" But yeah, he he was like distraught, and I think that, but that's privilege. That that's privilege where someone can write something like that and if word if it was a larger corporation your opinion may not have made it up there right and okay life goes on so you know got me thinking i should say something um but it's it's just it's not cool man it's just not it's not and it it's but you know i i kind of i i can't prove this uh, I would I would have to do way more research, but I have a suspicion. You said uh, something akin to uh, white people did the atrocities they did to black people, and because they thought of them as less than human. Mm-hmm. I think it's because they realize they're greater than human. How awesome! And I don't want to cuss because I've been I've been I've been told I've been cussing a lot. Cuss. I've We're been cuss. fucking amazing. Yeah, we really are, and they felt threatened by our natural adaptability, adaptability, our grace, our physiques, our just black. Like I just I I told you how I feel about black women. Mm-hmm. Black women are just gorgeous, beautiful, and then you just think of our like our anatomy, the fast twitch muscle fibers and just like the just we're super I feel human. like they look and was like, yo <laughs> They're super can't, human. Can't compete with these. You know? And so then they went ahead and did what they did. I, I feel like it's always been um all of the the uh the horrible things that they've done once black people were, you know had a little bit of advancement and progress. Uh, have always been out of fear and not out of just pure hatred. I, I feel mm-hmm. like I, I feel like it's a mixture of both, but I feel like the fear element was bigger than the hatred because they realized, like, if we let them have, like, yo, they might get us up out of here real quick mm-hmm. if we don't do something. Um, I think so. It's I, just... I, I think that's that's just my. My personal opinion. I obviously can't prove it, but no, I just I feel think, like I think everything you're saying is is spot on. I yeah. think it's one of those things where you don't let the powerful realize they have the power or how powerful they are. So you 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 manipulate everything you can. And I will give credit to Protestant white men throughout history because in my opinion, they recognize that they brought very little to the table. And because of that, they took from everyone else and they went out of their way to ensure that everyone didn't get a chance 
to, like you said, overtake them. It's fear. Fear makes people do things that are unreasonable. But at the end of the day, like the term black excellence, I feel like it's been thrown around and it's been used and, you know, it's, it's become lighthearted. But that is a legitimate thing. A lot of the th- if you go out of your way to absorb black history and inventions and creations and creators like these things are black. One of the richest men to this point in history still was black. I studied him. They said he would visit a city and throw off their entire economy because he would just sling gold and they just did not, they could not support it. What's his name? You don't know his name? I do know his name. Mansa Musa. Yes, yeah, sorry. I was Gee, re- no, goodness I was, gracious, Jessica. Stop. This is what happened. <laughs> so I read, so initially I read a book about. I thought you knew, I was giving I you, did, I was setting you up for the alley. <laughs> oh, I thought you was going to put it in. No, you actually realized, didn't know his name. I realized I was saying, I was thinking someone else's name. Ibn Batuta, who was a Middle Eastern explorer, he traveled with him. And I read his book. Which was a which was a collection of his adventures following Masa Musa. So his name was coming front of mind because I wrote a paper on him. So halfway through the story, I realized, like, man, I'm saying my my mind is saying Ibn Batuta, and that's not the right name. So I wasn't going to say a name, but thank you for calling me out. Yes, I thought I was. I thought I was no, helping you out. I I for the- this is me. I, don't I was, throwing the, I was throwing the oop. I can dunk on my own. Mm, right there. But yes, forgive me all. I couldn't remember his name. Masa Musa. But yeah, he was. I don't think one of, I think the richest man to ever. Yeah, and I believe they said even with changes of currency, inflation, Inflation, all of that, that he would still be. But like just reading his stories, I mean, he just. Yeah, most most kids would never, never know that. No. And I know about it. I, I mean, this I, is a, and this is a, a country that glorifies well, the ultra rich, ultra rich and wealthy. But he was black. But yeah, you'll never hear about Mansa Musa. I mean, Musa. he was going through the Mali Empire, and when I t- like he said he, I mean, he was just throwing gold, just like it was nothing, and they could not support, like they could not support it. My mom knew this history. My parents studied this, but this is African history is so different than black American history. Like my mom, her educational system didn't teach her about slavery to the extent that we understand it here. They understood the slave trade where it was like, they take people from Africa. And that's the, once they left the coast, once they left the castles, they didn't know what happened to them after that. So, but I grew up knowing about Masa Musa. I knew about, African history because this is the the history my parents were taught. So even though white culture colonization infiltrated, there was there's still an understood greatness within Africa, within black history in Africa that I feel is denied here and that's because america wants to conveniently be so political and conveniently control what information is is given to their people and i don't know if it's just a matter of we don't want to acknowledge it we don't want to have to accept it you know we don't want the guilt that comes with it like it's just a band-aid rip it off like truly teach your kids, your generations, your citizens, the history of this country and why people are where they are and why people are not. Because you have situations where there was something, I was watching something on Instagram and I had to I had to repent on myself because there was this kid, you know, had like those free, free locks, was driving in a Mercedes in Florida, the same town that Trayvon Martin was killed in, city, I don't know if it's city or town. Um, because he drove through a neighborhood that his friend lived in. He was leaving. These white people were telling him, get out. You don't belong here. Through a brick, like a big stone in the back of his car. He's driving Mercedes. Guess he's an up-and-coming rapper. He's got a blue check, so he's legit. Um, and, I mean, they're like, you don't belong here, blah, blah. I mean, they, uh, fortunately, the guys got arrested. He recorded it. But my initial thought was victim-blaming. Well, how was he driving? What was he doing? But... 
there are plenty of white kids who do reckless stuff. No one throws a brick in their car. No one tells them they don't belong. Like white kids can do reckless stuff in the hood. No, no black person tells them you don't belong here. There's a, there's a, there's a huge disparity in this country that needs to be addressed. We need to stop brushing over it. We need to stop pretending it's not there. We need to tackle things. It's like any relationship. There are issues that you try to pretend around. If you don't actually attack them, they're going to keep growing. They're going to keep growing. The Bible talks about the little foxes. Like you, you need to address it. And America hasn't done that. America hasn't genuinely apologized for for slavery, for the Jim Crow era, for the KKK, for not actually making effort to defend and protect its citizens. America went out of its way to ensure that black people were not successful because then that would have proved that all of the years that, you know, three fourths of a man and all of these laws that are saying they're not really people and they need to be managed by white people to be successful. But then you had Tulsa when they were free and they became these huge societies. You have Wilmington, all of these cities that they show that they are able to support and sustain themselves. America doesn't want to acknowledge its wrongs, which is why they're stripping it out of history books, which is why they're not really depicting it. And no, I'm not a fan of trauma porn in black movies, but maybe I have to accept that that's how black people force feed it into the eyes of the person who is inflicting the harm. Granted, we're the ones who have to absorb it over and over and over again, but there's there's so many wrongs. I think about all of the people who, you know, we yes, we saw George Floyd because someone had a camera. How many George Floyds from generation to generation to generation had there been that were disadvantaged? Someone went to work and just didn't come home because they were black. The trauma that that puts on, and that's generational trauma from... Africa all the way to here I was thinking about the fact that it's one probably one ancestor of mine who either was or wasn't in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the right time that is why I am not a descendant of someone who was enslaved here it's 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 that tiny like if someone Mandela affected something and went back in time and someone decided to get water from a well at noon instead of at 10, that could have been my ancestor being snatched, changing my entire lineage. Like it, it, it's, it's, it can overwhelm the mind if you process that. But that's, that's trauma that people from the African side had to deal with. Wars happen, someone, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen Roots, I'm sure you have, but like, Kunta Kente was a prince. He was walking, I think, between villages and was snatched. Think of the trauma that was put onto his family, where it's your relative went and never returned. So I think about that trauma that's probably in my bloodline. What cousin, brother, sister, uncle, mom, dad just disappeared for their family to not know what happened to them? For them to be put on a ship and sent to a new land and have to adapt under horrible circumstances. What person in after emancipation was accused of looking at a white woman or not stepping down or doing something that is human, but because they were black, it was used against them. And never came home. And how did that trauma affect generations? That's now, you know, trickled down to you. Like, there, there's so much that our white counterparts will never have to take into consideration. You know, they get the beautiful Ellis Island story. My great-great-grandfather's name is in this book because he wanted a better opportunity for his family. That privilege... And yes, I recognize that the Irish had it rough, the Italians had it rough, but there's still a privilege that the white skin gave.
get mm. you. I mean, I mean, it is true. It wasn't glamorous, but it, I don't know if it wasn't. wasn't. It wasn't like well, there. So in New Orleans, remember when we went to New Orleans? There was a lynching. They lynched like ten Italians, but New Orleans paid reparations to the families of the people that were lynched. And I think it was even only because they were called out on the fact that like they lynched white people essentially, and they were like y'all, takes- they, they were <laughs> like y'all y'all pushed it y'all went too far with that you lynched white people, yeah. So I won't discredit other people's struggle, but your struggle is never going to be comparable to the struggle of the black man. Facts. Facts with an X. No, that's a fax machine. No, F A X T. Faxed. This. I want emphasis. Okay. Thanks. Sure. So that's just where Sorry. I am. That's where I am emotionally. That's where I am mentally. Where I'm just like, I get, I get, I get it. But I also, I get frustrated. Like you think of someone like Marcus Garvey, who was like, "Y'all, we got to go." Let me get these ships together. Let's go. And how that didn't work. But then I also get like, we built this country. Why should we leave? There's just, there's so much overwhelming emotion that can go into the black experience when you try and think and process all of it. And then, but at the end of it, when you really are able to peel all the layers, there's so much beauty And it took me decades to really acknowledge the beauty of blackness of, of, and, and I, I know I walk in it lately, but just the simple, the simplicity of complimenting a black woman for me. I've noticed you've, there's been an uptake in that I have been very intentional. Every time we go out, Jesse will be like, girl, yes. And I, and I don't even like. I'll be looking like. I'm very. She. She bisexual. <laughs> I is she too, hitting on this woman right I in front too of me? Appreciate the beauty of black women. Um, mm-hmm. I was raised by a black woman who was the sister to other beautiful black women who was raised by a phenomenal black woman, Georgina. Shout out to Georgina. She was goat among goats. So I have been very intentional about making sure. Now, I'm not just going to fake compliments like you, the compliments going to be worth it. But when I see a black woman who is woman, I need to make sure she knows because we are beaten down. Our confidence is is if we don't lift ourselves, it's if we don't lift ourselves, it's hard to lift ourselves as an individual. Um, so, yeah, I'm very like I will. I'll give you a look. I'll be like, yes. You know what? Huh? I feel that. Yeah. That's legit. It is. And it's come, it comes from a genuine what? place. I'm going to match your energy. I'm going to start doing the same Please thing. Please don't go around complimenting. <laughs> All the beautiful black women are like, you know what? But you know what? If you do it in a non-creepy way, I think... I think it... it I, normally, I normally compliment uh, the less... Uh, commented on features of women. Yeah, because you were commenting this girl's eyebrows, so I like yeah. went out of my way to see her eyebrows. Um, she wasn't black though, but I think um, she wasn't. But, but I was just speaking with really women good. in general. Yeah. But um, I think there's, there's but like no now that I have locks, like I was on Instagram earlier today, I bought some some stuff for my locks, and uh, one of the, I don't know if it was the uh, the woman who owns the brand or if she was just like a brand ambassador, but she, her locks were just like some of the best I've ever seen. Like I've, I fell in love with her locks. I was like, Oh my gosh, these locks are just amazing. So, um, I get it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't put that, but, um, cause you know, Instagram be snitches sometimes. Like it'll show you <laughs> somebody commented or the, like, it does. I, I, maybe not it anymore. Do I don't use it. I don't use it that much. I, I remember it used to, I guess it stopped a while ago, but, um, just in case, but no, I think feds out here watching. I, I can't. Think the black, I can't get caught slipping. The black complimenting is necessary. It's built out of a place of trauma. I recognize that, and I, I'm exhausted by using the word trauma because I recognize that we say everything is traumatic, but at the end of the day, life is trauma. 
Like, I think that's what people need to accept that there are a little, little things that can happen in life that can become a traumatic effect. Life in itself is trauma. And it's just how you overcome those individual traumas, however they may be that build you in my opinion. Mm. Um, Cause even from birth, like birth is traumatic. Birth has been traumatic for me as the birther. Is it traumatic if you don't, like as a child, because you don't remember it. You, you know, they actually say if Who's you they? people, <laughs> Who's people? You what can people? be, you can, you can remember it, but it's more no, so being like slowed down. Like, you, like if you get hypnotized, you can be hypnotized to the point where your psyche can like pull up the memory of birth, which is why a lot of women are so intentional about. The type of births they have, home births, you know, more tranquil, relaxed, unmedicated, because that is a traumatic process. Like, I'm gonna need to see some. I'll pull up some doctors. Some, some receipts. So you this. can, you you can. It is traumatic, but you can re- recollect. It. Maybe I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if Jessica had stayed longer. Maybe she could have got some <laughs> in Vegas. Uh, we just went to the. Uh, Oh, that's a different, that's a different gift. I'm sorry. She went to a, a psychic, right? Not a hypnotist. Don't, I'm sorry. Don't my bad. You. Don't talk about it. Leave Jess my, alone. My bad, Jess. Leave Jess alone. But yeah, so. My fault. I think that it, it's very important for me to compliment black women. It's very important for me to compliment my daughters, for my daughters to see me complimenting back black women. Because I think it's important for it to not be a competition. Um because a lot of blackness is also rooted in competition. You had your house slaves, you had your field slaves. Yeah. So, you know, make evening the playing field. And I've recognized that in the girls and how they interact with each other. Like somebody will do something small, like the smallest thing. And it becomes like a cheer fest. Yeah. And everybody's like, has to clap. Like Savi will pee on the potty. Savi's peed on the potty like a hundred times. But when she does it, she's going to call her sister and tell her sister. And her sister's going to, good job, I'm I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> So it's, it's, that's important to me. I want them to be their own champions, but I want them to champion each other. And I want them to know that they're not in, con- like, the idea of what is yours is yours. I think if a lot of white people accepted that, there would be less issues racially. What's yours is yours. Like, right subtract affirmative action and all of these things that you say is the reason why a black person is in a certain position if it was for you it's for you in the season that you are supposed to have it so yeah i am if i see a black woman doing wonderful black woman things i'm going to call it out i'm going to make sure you know i want to make sure you are even if it's if i'm the only compliment you get in the day i want to make sure you know it so yeah it's and it's going to be on the increase Lovely. Thank you. Um, anything else? Along with. Oh, you actually have something else. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Well, I mean, don't ask if you don't want me to. I, 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 I mean, thought, along that, with it I thought being, that, that was it. Oh my gosh, we really talked that long? Yes. Along with it being um, Juneteenth, it is also Father's Day. So do want to take a moment to shout out the good dad. The dads who are present, the dads who are active, the dads who care, the dads who recognize the importance of the role that they play in their children's lives. And not even, and I, I won't even limit it to dads who are biological fathers. There are plenty of males out there who provide the fatherly support what is so funny? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm 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 horrible. I'm th- I'm thinking of this. There's this meme on Twitter where uh, it's a stepdad and he got these shirts made. <laughs> so this he's got this stepkid standing around him and he's kneeling with his back to the camera and is like, "I'm not the father. I'm the father that stepped up. <laughs> I'm not the step. I'm not the stepdad. I'm not the stepfather. I'm the father that stepped up." <laughs> and it's just. I'm sorry. I just it's what popped into my mind when you said <laughs> biological. I'm sorry. My bad. It's the it's the um it's it's the old fashioned. I'm done. I'm sorry. 
But it's funny. If you see it, if I show it to you, you'd laugh. I was just trying to compliment. I'm sorry. Go the ahead. Dads Go and ahead. The, the, the non dads who are still positive My fatherly fault. influences um, to children in need. Not even just children, sometimes adults. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. I'm done with you. The fathers. Because you just. Who step up uh, on a daily basis, whether it's biological or not. I, I agree. You should. I salute all of you. Um, and I can't let uh, this moment pass uh, without acknowledging um, my father on Father's Day, who uh, has, as uh, my wife and I go further into our marriage has become uh, less and less discreet about the fact that he appreciates my wife more than me. So um, I called you, FaceTimed you, and you ain't pick up. And I bet if I had had Jessica FaceTime me, you'd have picked up on the first ring. Um, and he made he made no no bones about it when I when I when I when I checked him on. He was like, like yeah. He's like, well, you should have had Jessica call me the first time then. So I was like, okay, I see you. I got you, Gail. So uh, shout out to my 75-year-old father who has uh, it's been um, it's been a fantastic, I'm being serious now, has been a, a fantastic role model for me. Um, all throughout my life uh, and I, I didn't always appreciate him because I didn't understand him but once I understood him man my appreciation went went through the roof and up to the clouds so uh, yeah happy Father's Day dad uh, happy, happy Father's, Father's, Day. Father's Day to uh, my oldest brother Donald who um, who I've been blessed to have closer to me and I know we don't spend a whole lot of time together just because of schedules and kids and family but um we uh we were able to uh, have a, a brother's day out a couple of weeks ago and uh it was really needed for both of us i think and we, we got we got real naked <laughs> with our uh with our feelings and our emotions we were, we were each very vulnerable um and i love i love my big brother and uh it was uh it was great to uh just just kind of speak to him and and really just have that one-on-one -on -one time. So happy birth happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to my dad. And happy Father's Day to all the other fathers out there. I, I second that sentiment. Um, Except the get naked part. Yeah, I was confused. I was like, <laughs> what? Really? I thought you yeah, yeah, went to smoke cigars. I didn't I realize y'all were getting, I mean, for your brothers. So we were undressed you with can, our No, that's fine. I, I think more men need to be more vulnerable. Hey, mental health, man. It is, um, it's necessary. Put that shit out. But and don't you do, no, still, do no good keeping you still it. block, because I'll be like, are you okay? And you kind of like look at me anytime I ask you. What do you mean? Look how you're feeling. About what? Just like when I ask you how you're feeling. Like you get, mm -hmm. you're still in a place where you get very defensive if I call out like that you're like emotionally unstable. Okay. That's not. It's not for this kind. It's not Unstable for this episode. Is a harsher word. It's not for this episode. But um, anyway, so, I will. But also, I, I, I appreciate you trying to tear me down in public. <laughs> I, I will also that. call out um, my father-in-law, who has, um, who is more than a father-in-law. But I have to call him father-in-law so people can understand whose father he is, um, and that I got to acquire him. And I won't lie. In the beginning, I. I, I questioned what kind of relationship he and I would have. And as I've grown from being a girlfriend who he quickly told, I just need to learn to ignore him. Those are his exact words. He came out and he said, I he was like, just, just ignore me. I was like, okay, this is going to be odd. But I went from that to a pending fiance do you remember pending? I remember pending. Yep. I remember pending. Um, to a wife slash daughter-in-law to the mother of his grandchildren, um, his granddaughters. It's our evolution has been great. 
And it's fun having American parents because I feel like certain liberties I'm given, certain I'm able to vocalize myself in in different ways than I would if by some odd chance they were not American. And it's nice to have that freedom. Um, even this podcast, just knowing that they watch it, if I didn't have that comfort, I don't. I would be more guarded in how I approached conversations and just being able to complain about their son to them, um, like be, being able. I don't know if y'all like when y'all are choosing your your partners. If you cannot vent to your husband's mother about the child that she raised, oh, are you talking about mom? Oh, I be cool. and she listens too, and she like. I mean, she, oh, well, it's good to know because she, I'm supposed to take her to lunch tomorrow, but I guess that's next. She hits me with like a girl. I get it. The can- but, cancer like Christmas. But I think one thing that you acknowledge as one thing that I learned from, I'll say your mom specifically in terms of because, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, your man is your first child. And, you know, men, they'll come for like the mom and the mother in law. Like, why didn't you raise your son like this? Blah, blah, blah. And I think now that I'm a parent and a wife i also recognize that you can teach your kids things and they don't actually do it and that's not a fault of you it's on the fact that your kids are their own individual people so um yeah my my father-in-law is i know at the drop of a hat would stop and if i needed something do it with the exception of birthday dinners um but that's that was my one jab. Um, but no, your dad is an amazing father, an amazing man, and is a good percentage as to why you are the way you are. Not to say that you are without flaws, <laughs> but... I recognize that your fatherhood is semi mirrored from his with your own adaptation. So I do appreciate him in that capacity. And I also appreciate Uncle Phil. Rest in peace. Yes. But yeah, that's all I got. It's been emotional and I finished my drink. So I'm just, I'm just in it. Yeah, I almost, I almost teared up a little bit talking about my dad. But it's more than likely it's the old fashioned because it's the second one I've had tonight. It is. So it's got the stuff flowing. So I think that's a good time. To, that's a good place to stop. This is only um, supposed to be thirty minutes. Supposed to be a I don't know 30, how. Thirty minute. It's its uh, own episode. It is. So now I have to run two episodes this week. So thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. Again, this was another episode of Jessica Vibes featuring David. Y'all, do you think um, I should just get my own podcast? I mean, maybe we should. Leave this dude. No, you can't leave me because <laughs> I was telling Jess, because uh, the second time when I interviewed, obviously, James, who this episode will run after that, since now it's, this is its own episode. Um, and I just told her, I was like, it's just weird. Like, I'm just so dry when I'm interviewing. Um that i realize i say it all the time so this there's this is on record but i've said it that jessica is the talent of rush vibes i am only as good as i am and as comfortable as i am because she's here with me she could be just fine on her own i need jessica (laughs) in in podcasts and in life and in everything like i'm just (laughs) dry i'm going to stale i'm going to snippet this and just unworthy i will say without, I, I without am jessica. an interviewer because so, when i went to the event with the couple from married at first uh, sight i literally interviewed them so, and i apologized for interviewing them. so um i have no problem when when jessica goes off and just dominates the episode because it's who the people come to see i i understand this i they come to see you i the You're, worst thing you can be is just unaware. They come to see you. So I know. Don't sell I mean, we, we we have our chemistry, yeah. and that's things that people have, have told us. But uh, on our as we stand alone, 
I think um, I have yet to find my my style, solo style. So, uh, but I don't really know my I, solo style. I don't know. The, I don't know the point I was making. I don't know how I got on this point, but um, that you yeah. need me. Yeah, I, I absolutely need Jessica. So uh, this will be its own episode. So we'll run. Uh, James is, will probably drop sometime Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday ish, and this will probably you'll probably be seeing this at the end of the week. So uh, right before um, right before the weekend. So two episodes in one week. When was the last Ooh. time that happened? Oh, season one. It was, Something um, happened because we did the the bat signal. We did the bats. We did the rush vibe signal over the city of Charlotte, which was uh, it was just pretty cool. Um, I should have used it for. Uh, I had the opportunity to use it a couple, but I don't know. I just don't have. Yo, when I say I don't have this, the editing stamina that I had last year, like I really he was in it last year. I really don't. Um, it's that third kid. I tell you, two kids is two kids. Three kids is like fifteen. But so. once you have three. They no, say that you're not like they, you, the rest of again, them. Again, I won't find we out. We will not find out. So I'll they ask, they can keep saying that for I'll other people. Yeah, she's due to have a kid soon. God bless them. God bless you, Cynthia and Ian. Whew. Um, anyways, so yeah, appreciate everybody for uh, tuning in. Again, this is our second Juneteenth episode. Well, third. We had a Juneteenth themed interview earlier this week. No, Juneteenth episode and we also did a Juneteenth I think, we did, I think we did two Juneteenth episodes last week last year so maybe this is number four so uh, we'll be back either whatever however you slice it up we'll be back next week um, together hopefully I'm oh, sorry you're going out of town so we'll have to record um, later this week uh, but as I guess the good thing about running two episodes in one week, there's not as big a rush. Um, and yeah, we'll be back. And again, we'll be bringing the uh, the guests in with more more frequency via Zoom and and hopefully in person. You think you think L? Because I want to. I don't, I'm going to spoil it for y'all. You think L will come in person, or do we have to Zoom Ellen? I think with enough notice, we could get Elle. We can get Elle in here. Because, you know, she's, she, Elle is ready. Is she ready? She's ready. Okay. Like Tiffany had it. Ready to, she ready. Ready to leave us. Which I, I'm, I'm but going to. Would, Elle's would have to be an extended episode. It would probably have to be like a twofer. Oh, that kind of editing stamina. You just do two episodes. We'll just do one and we'll. Cut it down. And I guess we could bring... Uh, Drops too many nuggets. We can bring some people back from season one. Maybe Melissa. Oh, wait. Um, am I thinking of the wrong L? I'm thinking of the wrong L. No, the... The L... Influencer. Who, yeah, I was thinking of a different L. What are you thinking of? L from season one. Oh. Yeah, we can bring L back. We can bring That's Leah back. That's why I was like, it has to be... We can bring Leah back. Although I don't appreciate her just assuming that she was going to be coming back because she was like on our on our uh, promotions for season oh, one. She was like, it. she was like, I can't wait to come back. I was like, oh, hold, sis. hold up, you sis. Already know. We have a process here at Rush Vibes. What's the process? The process is book yourself. You tell us you want to come on. Because truth <laughs> be told, James, James tried to guilt trip me into getting on. He was like, yo, this is another pride month and you ain't got me on. You ain't had me on Rush Vibes yet. And I was like, oh, you want to come on? And then we made it happen. I didn't know he wanted to come on. So we said something and then we made stuff. Yeah, we we made it happen. In. But don't be offended if you guilt us and we don't bring you on because you might just not have the. I mean, truth be told, we've had like. In total, like three people guilt, like Alan uh, yeah, that was, was like, yo, let me, let me come on. Like I, when I come on Rush Vibes, when I come on Rush Vibes, I was like, all right, bro, let's, let's bring you on here. So I guess we have to bring him back too. I have to bring everybody back. I do, but I don't. I don't know because he's not gonna do nothing but talk about how <laughs> this year all all these guns are brought to school in Charlotte oh high God. schools. Um, yeah, which we'll, is a conversation in itself. Um, yeah, we'll bring him back on. 
So yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. We're supposed to be ending. Yeah, I guess we'll be happening with more, with more, with more, episode. more frequency. Uh, so YouTube, uh, if we have any new subscribers from from James's uh, circle and following, welcome to the Vibe Tribe. We appreciate y'all, uh, and we hope that you not only enjoy the content but you share with your networks as well, so that we can grow this thing at least 100 because it's been like a year, and I'm trying to feel like we should be at 100 by now. We'll get so there. we're gonna we be need, at 100. We need six more. So just. What are we, June? Give it to August. Just six people. We just need six people. Get the 100. I mean, we're not going to stop at 100, but no. I would like to get to 100. So, appreciate y'all. Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. Leave us a review. Tune. Rate us. Tune in. Um, Facebook, Instagram. Holla at us. And uh, it's late. So it is late. It's, if you're not midnight. black, go out of your way to absorb some black history information. Regarding Juneteenth, educate yourself. Absolutely. But we'll see you later. Yeah. We out. Y'all be good. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now, can't stop me now.